Hey, Pastor Drew here. Um, do y'all know the hymn, uh, My Hope is Built on Nothing Less? Words, no storm can shake my inmost calm while to that rock I'm clinging. Since Christ is Lord of heaven and earth, how can I keep from singing? Been using the term wilderness some for this season of physical distancing and coronavirus, uh, but another word for it might be storm, something that comes our way that's chaotic, that's scary and unknown. And so I wanna continue our Wednesday Lenten series on returning to the Lord. We say at Spirit in the Hills, we're diversely centered in Christ, that Christ is our center. And this is a decentering time. So it's important to return to our center. To return to the Lord who is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The scripture reading for this Wednesday uh, is from the fourth chapter of Jonah, or is the fourth chapter of Jonah. So I need to give you a quick uh super quick recap of the book of Jonah. It's only four chapters. It won't take you long to read. And you might remember it, you know, story of Jonah and the whale or Jonah and the big fish. Um, Jonah is told by God that he, that Jonah is to deliver a message to the people of Nineveh. Now these people are bad people. They're the people that are out to get Jonah. Jonah's people, they've been persecuting them and they're not a just or a right people. They're not kind and gracious. Jonah's supposed to go to Nineveh and tell them to repent unless God would strike them down. Jonah goes the other way. He's supposed to go to Nineveh. He goes as far the other way as he can. In fact, he gets into a boat to go the other way and further away from where God is calling him to go. Uh, he gets, a storm comes. And the only way to stop the storm, Jonah has to get off the boat in the middle of the sea. God provides for a big fish to rescue Jonah. Jonah eventually goes to Nineveh. Jonah sort of half-heartedly delivers his message to the people. He doesn't even get all the way to the middle of the city. Uh, and the whole city repents. The entire city hears God's word through Jonah and repents. And, uh, and God spares them. God shows mercy. They, they deserved the results, the punishment, the consequences of their bad actions, and yet God shows them mercy. And that's where we pick up. Chapter 4 starts, But this was very displeasing to Jonah. And he became angry. He prayed to the Lord and said, Oh Lord, is not this what I said when I was still in my own country? That's why I fled to Tarshish at the beginning. For I knew that you are a God who is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and ready to relent from punishing. And now, O oh Lord, please take my life from me for it is better for me to die than to live. And the Lord said, is it right for you to be angry? Then Jonah went out of the city, sat down east of the city and made a booth for himself there. He sat under it in the shade, waiting to see what would become of the city. The Lord God appointed a bush and made it come up over Jonah to give shade over his head to save him from his discomfort. So Jonah was very happy about the bush. But when dawn came up the next day, God appointed a worm that attacked the bush so that it withered. When the sun rose, God prepared a sultry east wind and the sun beat down on the head of Jonah so that he was faint and asked that he might die. He said, it is better for me to die than to live. But God said to Jonah, is it right for you to be angry about the bush? And he said, yes, angry enough to die. Then the Lord said, you are concerned about the bush for which you did not labor and which you did not grow. It came into being in a night and it perished in a night. 
And should I not be concerned about Nineveh, that great city, that big city, in which there are more than 120,000 persons who do not know their right hand from their left, and also many animals? I've been focusing on this definition of God, and it shows up in Jonah. Though uh, it's funny because Jonah says it and he almost seems upset about it, right? So, the Lord, the Lord, gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. I wonder, where do you see those characteristics of God in this story of Jonah? Where do you see grace or mercy, a slowness to anger? or an abiding, a steadfast love. I wonder also how you take Jonah's response. Jonah seems almost upset that God is like this. Sometimes God's love and mercy and grace offend us because we want God to be mad at people we think are bad. Sometimes God's grace and mercy and steadfast love and slowness to anger upset us because they include people that we might not want included because they're given so freely and we think that we had to earn it and so do others. I have one other question for you with regard to this text. God and Jesus show and commend mercy. Last week we talked about the text of the Good Samaritan and the Samaritan who's the neighbor is the one who showed mercy and we're called to go and do likewise. We're called to love neighbor and enemy. What does it mean to show mercy? What does it mean to show mercy to those we don't like, those we think are bad, those who are our enemy? When have you received mercy? When have you shown mercy? Let's give thanks to God who is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and whose steadfast love is with us in this and every storm. 